Welcome to a Faithful God podcast. I'm your host, Tammy Rotzel, and today on the show, my friend, Mycel is joining us as we talk about how to cultivate a grateful heart when it comes to your kids. So grab those earbuds and your favorite beverage and join me for today's show. Well, hey friend, happy Friday. Welcome back to the show. Listen, I've got a great show for you today. I cannot wait to share it with you. My friend, Mycel, is coming back again. I believe she is the most, um, she is the guest that's been back the most, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but she's going to talk to us about really, really learning how to to teach our children to cultivate a grateful heart. And we're gonna, she's gonna talk about the benefits of this, you know, why it's so incredibly important. And Mycel actually even has a book out to help guide you every step of the way. So I cannot wait for you to get your hands on this. So listen, friends, I'm not going to wait, make you wait any longer. On with my conversation with Mycel. Hi, Mycel, welcome back to the show, my friend. Thank you so much, Tammy for having oh, me. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I don't know. You know what? I meant to look at this before we started recording. How many times have you been on? Is this your fourth time on or third time? I think, on? I think third time. Third time. Okay. Okay. Yes. Hey, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So then I'm pretty sure. No, no, no. I think it's four. Once I, I met with your, the community. Right. With the mother's wow. over there. Uh -huh. So it's four. <laughs> In the Bro Your Faith community. Yes, you did. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. And, and for my listeners, I always like us to know. I We met through a course, a digital course. We were just talking about this through yes. a course. And we were both in that program. And we have never met in person, but we have been friends now for several years. Right? Yes. 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 That was, I think, 2018. I got into that course in 2018. Oh, my word. <laughs> so wow. around that time, maybe the end or maybe 20, early 2019 or 20, within that 2018. So okay. we have been friends for oh. a long time. I, I believe oh. that this year we have to meet in person. <laughs> I think so, too. I think so. Too. I think we should make that happen when I'm out in Denver this year. So I think we need to make that happen. So for our listeners, I have to tell you, so myself and I have been, before we really officially started recording, we've been talking for 45 minutes because it's been a while since we've uh, had the opportunity to talk with each other. But uh Anyway, Mycel, listen, um, for those who don't know, I will be I will be sure to put all of Mycel's previous episodes in the show notes and stuff. But for those of those who um excuse me, haven't seen or heard those episodes yet, tell us just a little bit about yourself. Thank you so much, Telly. Um Absolutely. I am Mycel Aquami. My last name is a little bit hard to prove. <laughs> so I get it if you don't say it. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm a speaker, I'm an author. Well, I'm a mother, wife, pastor's wife, a minister. And I'm a woman's, I like mothers, and one of the things that God has placed, or one of the passion that God has placed on my heart, which Tammy was, um, is it the 2022 hour conference? She did so marvelously well. I love listening to you Thank all the time. You. Thank like, you, that was so fun. <laughs> God wants mothers to have that personal relationship with him, to know him. And then women, especially we are influencers. So if a mother knows God, He's able to help the children, nurture the children, even their marriage, there's peace in the marriage. The husband is able to also be at peace because the wife knows God. So if anything is going on in the family, she goes to God first, even before coming to the husband to talk about it. So encouraging mothers to know God so that they can influence and impact their children. And with all these things going on in our society right now, this is more needed than ever before, as mothers know in the law. So that is one of my passion. And I I, I have a, a website, as Temi was talking about, we were digital 
um, marketing and blogging and all those things. So that is me. Yeah. And then I'm, if I didn't say it, I'm an author to of this is my faith book that I might introduce today. <laughs> yes, yes, we want to hear all about it. Before we do, real quick, I do want to talk about that. You know, some of the things. I mean, right now, I think the thing that sticks out most in my mind right now is just the not just, but the identity crisis that we have with our children. And you know, we were watching a show last night and it was a silly show. It was just a rom-com, but you know, where the parents were saying it, there was this baby, um, there was this baby in the scene and the, the, the brother had the baby and said, oh, he, you know, identified him as it just said he, and the, per, the people, the other two people said, well, wait a minute. Now this baby was maybe four or five months old and the parents were saying, wait a minute, but how are you, you know, how can you choose their identity? How can you do this? And again, it was a silly show, but the, but the truth of the matter is this isn't silly at all. This is true no. happening no. within our world right now. And, and it's been, I know it's hurt you just as much as it's hurting me. It's, it's awful to see. And how did we get there? Yes. I, I just, uh, <laughs> I don't understand. How did we get there? You see, so taking one thing for granted and not even considering and thinking that, oh, it is nothing. You see, when, when, when God created everything and created human beings he created man and woman and that is what we use to identify ourselves so now with this confusion of not knowing no 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 wait maybe the child might where is it change the ident identity where is it coming from <laughs> It's definitely not what God wanted for us by any stretch of the of imagination. And, you know, and, and here's the thing. I recognize that, that there needs to be, there need to be conversations when, if a child is confused, I realize that there has to be oh, yeah. conversations. I realize that, um, we need to, you know, I, I am a big proponent of counseling. I think that's so important. Um, but to go and to make some of these changes, um, it's not okay. Especially when they are, especially when they are young. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, as a dental hygienist um, and still work one day in the office, we have children that we've been seeing for years and years and years. And now all of a sudden they're coming in identifying as as a different gender or no gender. gender at all. And, you know, we're so used to saying he or she, you know, she's got this going on. When the doctor comes in, we always, we tell them what's going on, what we've seen inside their, you know, in their mouth and, and everything. And now, you know, having to make these changes and, and say different things and use different pronouns and, and they get downright upset when you don't. And, and it's really hard. It's it's really hard. Um, and and it's heartbreaking. It's yeah. heartbreaking. To and, see that. and and one thing that in this confusion and all that, you see, God is merciful and God loves us. Yeah. And even them, God loves them. Yes. But absolutely. it's what that they have allowed themselves to believe yeah. and considering. And that is how they asked we, before we came on live. The enemy uses the mind and it works on the mind. That is the battlefield of the enemy. Absolutely. So if you are not feeding your mind with the things that are regular, that are normal, and you are listening to other things, that is what you are feeding and yourself with. And the enemy will come in. And then all these confusions come. But we are not saying this to condemn any of anybody no, no, no. in this situation now. Mm -hmm. We want you to know that God loves you. And that is not what he wants for you. Because if just like 
putting a square in a circle, it doesn't fit in well. So you are trying to do something that is not naturally how you were made. And it brings a whole lot of pain, sicknesses, things and confusion in your mind and the suicide, suicidal thoughts, thinking that people do not like me and all those things because if you are trying to fit something or do something that is not natural. Just like when you want to sleep and you are so sleepy and you want to prevent yourself from sleeping. You see that sleep will definitely come. Yeah. It's like you will, fall, you will fall asleep because it's nature. Yeah. You are trying to read. You are trying to concentrate on a message. Wow. But, and the eye, you are so tired. Maybe you've been tired throughout the day. So oh. you are like, I will brace this up. I'm not going to sleep. Yeah. By the time you realize you are sleeping, because yeah. that is nature. That is the natural way of our, our being. You wow. see, when we are tired, we sleep. So in the same way, with the natural things that God has made, especially about our sexuality and all those things, when you begin to change it, it becomes artificial. And that is when the difficulty comes in. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Yeah, that's so good. And and you're right. And I'm so glad you said that. There's no condemnation whatsoever. I mean, you and I were talking about this before we started recording and just, um, you know, talking about how, the enemy, I mean, like you said, our minds, that's his battlefield. And he will, he will twist. He that that's what he does is he twists the truth and he 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 feeds us with these lies. And so we have to be intentional. We can't, I mean, this takes action on our part to to actually or to to intentionally choose to believe, right? Because sometimes feelings feel so real, but we have mm -hmm. to remember. Feelings aren't facts and we have to stand. We have to intentionally stand on what we know to be true. And it's not easy. It's hard. And gosh, as moms, as you know, watching our children go through the, the things that they go through. I mean, it's, it's hard. It's impossible. It, it's just, gosh, trying to, I, I have to say, I, there are so many times my husband and I will say, I am so glad our kids aren't young right now because mm. now this is really hard. It's mm. really hard. But and it's being taught us too. Yes, it is. That's yes. the difficult aspect of because the children trust their teachers. Yes. As much as they trust the parents, they know that school is where you are taught the right and the wrong and then the things to do. So if a teacher is saying this, it's, that means that's the right thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> so true. So true. But I love what you're doing. You are <laughs> making a difference, uh, Micell, and, and for issues like this or any other issues that a child is having, um, just really being able to teach them how to set their eyes back on God, how to set their eyes back on God's blessings. And because it's so hard when we're in the middle of, of the mess as adults, it's hard to see above our circumstances. It's, you know, it, we're just, we feel like we're suffocating and everything that's going on around us. And that's one thing that I teach. I know you teach as well is we have to, we have to intentionally turn our focus to God and his blessings. In fact, and I was just working on this, uh, right now, as, as a matter of fact, um, but in my membership community, I mean, one of the things that I ask every single week is what were, you know, what were the blessings? What, did, what good happened in your life? Because we have to intentionally choose to focus on what we have to be grateful for, because it's mm. so easy in this world to go down that other way, to go down that, that feeling of doom and gloom and, and, um, and just not see the blessings because Satan is so good at that, but you're doing something. You have written a new book and I want to talk about that. So talk to us about what it is and how you came to write it. I know that's your heart is for moms and children, but talk to us about that. Thank you so much, Demi. Yeah. So my new book is Practicing Gratitude Journal for Kids um ages four to if anyone can see it 
it's on my website um, mycelaminsa.com and then it's on amazon as well but how i came to write this book um in december <laughs> i told you i've moved from one state to the wow. other <laughs> yeah and then when i got here um initially as like i wasn't able to i was in like an airbnb and i needed a place to stay and Im immediately i was check i checked out i didn't know where but you see that feeling that anxiety so what is going to happen but i believe that i heard the voice of god before coming so it's like god what are we going to do yeah. and that's overwhelming sense of gratitude for even being there. it was not a pretty situation but immediately i i turned my focus on him he being a good god knowing that he will not start something with any of his children and leave them in the middle to sink mm -hmm. so i began i said god i thank you but what are we going to do i know that you are going to make a way and immediately I just had two opportunities of a home that it was it it was man, mind blowing. So mm -hmm. I know that gratitude changes you yourself. Yeah. It changes you from being anxious or being or worrying. You see, whenever you are worrying, it's like you are trying to tell God that I can do it myself. So I don't need you. And when you read Ephesians 4.4, 4, mm -hmm. Paul was saying that rejoice in the Lord always. And he says, again, I say rejoice. When Paul was writing that, he wasn't in a, a, a peaceful place, like enjoying life and without <laughs> any pain or anything. He was in prison. And the, thing, the beatings before he even got there and the treatment he was having, but he knew that all that the flesh, anything can happen is the flesh, but it cannot affect who he is in the Lord. That is why the verse six of the same Ephesians 4, he says, be anxious for nothing. The King James Version says, be careful for nothing, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to the Lord. And then the Lord will give you supernatural peace. You see, so gratitude brings you to that um, state of emotional stability. It helps you to get rid of anxiety, get rid of sleeplessness. It changes your mood. It makes you confident in your life, in yourself, and also in the things that you are doing. It gives you that hope that, no, this is nothing. So coming back to the book for the kids, I realized that whatever we do, whatever we know, that is what we impact to our children. Mm -hmm. And if a child knows how to be grateful, it starts from as little as you can imagine they can talk. Mm -hmm. When you begin to train them to be grateful to God for giving them life, to be grateful to have a family, have a mother, have a father, to be grateful for the little food that the food they eat in the morning, afternoon, to be grateful that they are healthy, to be grateful to have some toys that's in all these things that I'm listening. There are places people don't have it. And it's a, a, a miracle prayer that somebody has been praying. But for them to have it, they should be grateful for the little, little things that God is providing in their lives. So when you begin to teach them that, and this is what is going to help them to, gr to grow in, in that area of gratefulness, and it changes every aspect of their lives. And in this book, you also know, so they will general what they have gone through in the day, how their day went, how grateful, what's happened at school, what, how they are, they are seeing nature, how they are seeing their friends and all those things. If they lived with an auntie or somebody, maybe for a short time, whatever went on, you have some emojis in it to let them, let them know, write down something. How are you feeling? They can sec or they can shade an emoji to to let you know so it's good for their mental health and as you know i have certification in i didn't add it when i was introducing myself i have certification in men and mental health and professional life coaching so with the knowledge in the mental health gratitude 
changes a lot of things. If a child is grateful, he will never think of committing suicide. Yeah. Yes. And, <laughs> and that's, you know, that's just, a, that's a whole nother issue. And it all just kind of gets intertwined, but just the suicide rate is, is just, it's so alarming. It's so heartbreaking. And, and, and the young ones even thinking of a young child trying to commit suicide. It's, yeah. 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 So that is um, practicing gratitude and that is how I came about it is like what the Lord has been doing in my life in the life of my children especially when they are going through something I would just be reminding them of what the Lord has done before you see and then if this is this situation is also it's not above what God can do if he has done something for your life before, he can do this too. Especially when they get to the teen and all those pressures from outside getting into their mind and all those confusion. When you are able to remind them to be grateful, not grateful for the, the bad thing that is happening, but yeah. grateful that you have a God who loves you and he will take you through that and he will deliver you from whatever you are going to and make and uh, provide for you. So gratitude, I believe that that is the most important thing that every human being, you, sh you should make it your goal that I will choose to be grateful every day. It's a choice. I will choose to be grateful no matter what I'm seeing. I choose to thank God. I should be, I choose to be thankful. I'm not going to um, complain and murmur and every no I would choose oh God it's not pretty but I thank you that you are God and you have given me authority over this I will overcome this one too so that places you in a certain level that really encourages you to face any challenge in life and as a parent it gives you that peace of mind because you have committed everything into his hands as I quoted in Ephesians 4, 6 to mm -hmm. 8 or to 7. You see, so with thanksgiving, bringing your request, telling the Lord, Lord, this is it. But I thank you that you are Lord and you have given me victory because you have already won the victory on the cross for me. So this is nothing to you and to me. I will overcome this one. And then that is when you have an overwhelming peace, the supernatural peace that surpasses human understanding. Yes, yes, that's so good. And it, I love that you have the book to to where that parents can go through that with them. Because as you and I were talking before we started recording, it's so important for the parents to be in touch with what they're feeling and to be that guide to say, okay. Yeah. yeah, this is, this isn't, you know, this, this didn't happen the way we would have liked for it to. This is hard. This was a, this is hard. This was a struggle and helping them see that, yeah, we're going to go through struggles in our life, but what did God do? I loved when you said that, when you said that, you know, but what did God do in the past? Like, what do you remember him doing? Remember when this went on? What wound up happening? What? How did we see God work in that after all? And to be able to train them, because this is a training. This is this is training ourselves um, to to turn and and focus on the gratitude, the things that we have to be grateful for, all the wonderful things that God is doing, even in the mess, or even in the midst of the mess and the hard and the pain, God is still working. And so being able to train them to do that for themselves is really important. And again, that connection between child and parent to know what they're feeling, what's going on and being able to walk through that together. I love that so much. I also love the emojis that you put in there because that's what our world is right now, right? It is <laughs> so to do that and connect with kids on that. I just think that is so, so, so cool for sure. So yeah, myself, this is, this is incredible, you know, and it's something that you and I both teach all the time is we've got to focus, we've got to choose to focus, right? Trusting God isn't a feeling. Sometimes mm. it's 
it's a, it's a choice. We've got to make that choice because right now, when we see all the mess around us, that the mess, the, the chaos, that's louder than God's word so much of the time. And so we have to make that choice to trust what we know to be true. Make that choice to be grateful that even in this mess, he's still God. He yeah, is because he he's yeah, sorry for cutting you because he says um that is it John 16 33 that he has already overcome the world. And in this world, we will have tribulations. So if you know Christ, if you know God, when things are happening, like what we are seeing now with all these chaos and all these things that is going on around us, you have a sense of peace because you know that you, the Lord has overcome this one on your behalf. And even apart from, let me share this story. There was a woman, there's this woman um, movie that I watched. Um, is it at club movie? And it talks about um, a family that their child, their child went to school and then they were taught about all these change, you, change of sex and all those things and you are not this and all those that. But you see, that what you said about the connection between the child and the parents, when mm -hmm. you are sitting down with them and going through all these journal, you are creating some bond. So with these parents, they had that bond with their child, even though they were told not to share whatever they had been taught at school with the parents. They, they had the, the child, when, when she came, she just um, came to um, the parents and then shared what they, even though in the quick, it was a quick something but they realized that something is going on with their child and that is how they were able to get into it to know what is going on and they were able to um save or let the child the child is now grateful that the parents went at length to be able to help her to be able to get rid of those ideas that they have been pumped it has been pumped into her head and now she was so much grateful you see so creating that bond and between child and parents is very, very important. Can your child come to you to talk to you about anything? Can your child share with you about the school, what is going on, even the friends, even the community, or even the relatives around, if there has been any abuse? Can your wow. child share? Do you have that time? So this practicing general trying to sit down and generally writing something with them, trying to go to, it gives you that confidence as a parent to know what's going on in your child's mind. And it also helps the child to know that my parents or my mom, my dad care so much to sit with me, to spend this time with me. We are so busy that we don't even have that time to spend with our children. So I'm encouraging parents, please, it's a foundation from the four years. That is how they are building their character, their, 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 their attitudes and all those things that they are going to grow with. So this is a foundational something for your child. If you want to see your child successful in life, doing the right things that you expect, you cannot do yeah. without you laying the right foundation for them. So true. So true. So definitely don't just get the book and give it to them. Work through the book with them. There's Maybe. just, you know, as you were saying that and describing the book and everything, I was just thinking of all the different things. I mean, the, the big obvious of sitting down and and forming a bond with your child and really understanding what they're really thinking, but teaching them, of course, course again do that we have to that 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 gratitude doesn't always come immediately like Imme a, oh no it's not natural <laughs> yeah and so teaching them those skills right to train them that okay yeah i know i know what i'm feeling but i know those feelings aren't facts what i do know is that god is still god 
What I do know that God is, you know, promises to never leave me. So teaching all of those, but just the journaling as well, as we go even deeper, the skills that it's teaching these children, mm. like it's just, I mean, it's, um, it's, oh gosh, all of a sudden the world, but I mean, it, 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 there are so many things it's teaching. That's not a very good way to say it, but so many things these that it's teaching these kids at such an early age. And it's just, it's profound and it's so incredibly important that we continue to do these kinds of things. So I love, 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 love that you have this book, Mycel. And, and I, I just want to thank you for following God's heart to, to, um, you know, obey and, and write this book and get it out there. I think it's just incredible. And it's so, so needed in our world right now. It truly is. It truly is. So I have a question for you because, because this is a, um, um, uh, something that we're dealing with. And I actually had a community member reach out one time after I was um, having this conversation on another episode. And, um, you know, I had someone reach out and say, I'm so glad you, you talked about this because my grandchild is going through this, this identity crisis right now. Um, so my question to you, because I know there are listeners out there who are going through this, what, as a mom and as a, a coach and, you know, certified in mental health, um, teaching, you know, what would you say to these women, whether they are moms, grandmothers, aunts, um, you know, whatever, um, what would you say, or what would be your best advice to, to start the conversation with, with their kids? Number one, I think your book. For sure. But what else, what other advice would you give myself? Yeah, thank you so much. So will it be like the child is already in it or just yeah, trying to advise the child against these things that are in school? Yeah, yeah. Yes, that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you have to, that is why the first relationship between you and a child is important. That is the number one. And then two, you tell them using the Bible, all the, I have quotations here almost at every page okay. with scriptures and all that. So, yeah. So for you, the parents or the mom, grandma, tell them the truth. Yeah. As John 8, 32 says, it is the truth that will set us free. And it's not even only that, it is the truth that you know that will set you free. So you know the truth that this is how God created us. So you start from there and then you start building on it. So God created man and woman in the beginning. And then this is how he made it. And whatever you are being taught at school, this one, it's, it's not the way God made things. Be truthful to them. They will ask questions. Okay, then why is it that they are saying this or people in my friend feels like he's no more a boy or he's having issues with her identity or his identity? Why is it so? So you again take time. Okay, so sometimes because of what you hear and you consider what you are hearing and then think about it, it brings in the confusion. So some of them, because they do not know, they are confused, but they, this is the truth. So you see, now you are guiding your child. So even if somebody comes closer to tell the child that, oh, um, or the friend, he sees the friend saying that now I don't want to be a girl again. If your child is a girl and a girlfriend, and he says, no, now I don't because I want to be a boy. Look at me, this, this, this. That is not how God made you. What you are feeling is not who you are. What the Lord has said about you is what you are, you is who you are. So it it will be a gradual conversation, but it starts from the relationship the parents have with the child. You see, it starts from there, and again introducing them to God early. You see, mm -hmm. when you you start with introducing them to God, teaching them the Bible, spending time with them in the morning. Sharing, even if it's a, a verse, as my other book, 
um, mom secret strength the comprehensive yeah. prayer guide for mothers you see you start with a prayer with them and after school when they come home you pray with them as well you ask them about what got went on at school and all these little little things helps them to develop and grow in their mind and it answers a whole lot of questions and delivers them from a whole lot of confusion out there i don't know if i've answered your question <laughs> No, you did. No, you very much did. Thank you. And you know what, as you, you were saying, as you were saying this, what I thought to myself was, so for those of you who don't know, Mycel does not live with her family. She hasn't been with her family, lived with her family for years. But what's so amazing about that is you still have a very strong, strong bond with your family, with your husband, with your kids. Um, and I was thinking just then, you know, there are a lot of people who, who, you know, they're, they're splitting time with their children and stuff. And so I think it's really cool because in the sense that you understand that you yeah. understand that you are not with your children physically every single day, but your yeah. bond is still there. You still have, you still have that uh, open line of communication. You're speaking with them every day. I'm sure it's through FaceTime or something like that. So you can see them. But so for those that uh, aren't physically with their children every day, I mean, this book, you can still, you don't have to physically be there with them to have this strong bond. You can still communicate with them and work through the book with them, even if you aren't together physically. Amen. Yes. 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 Yeah. So yes. as I was, as you were talking, I was thinking, you know, my cell is the perfect example of this because, yeah. because yeah, you aren't physically with your family yet. You're that has not, um, what do I want to say? Decreased your bond that, that that's not what I'm trying to say, but I mean that your bond is still very, very strong with your family. Amen. And it has been good. Mm -hmm. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that it's, it has been like, oh, my own strength or it has sure. not been as easy as, but it has been God. I started, I, I started before I traveled, all that I'm saying, that was what I was practicing. There yeah. is nothing about them at school. I will have to know all their teachers. I'll have to know all their friends. I will sometimes yeah. want the friends to come home. And I talk to them about everything. So even being away, I do the same thing. I remember my son was once saying that, mommy, you are not here, but you are more than being here with us. Oh. I was his <laughs> Oh. oh. <laughs> because yes. I want to know everything. Yes. I will call. I will know where you are. What are you doing? Your quiet time in the morning. What, do you, what are you reading? Which part did you read? How do you understand the word you read today? And then how does it speak to you? How do you bring it into the natural life? So I go into all those details to know what's going on. And then emotionally, then when something is going, when they start talking, what's going on today? You are not, then I will thank God for that. And I will say, and sometimes eh, they will say things like, okay, some daddy, this, daddy, then, and I will have to know how to talk to them. And then I will know how to talk to my husband about every situation. So that is how it has been. And then I make time to pray for them too. Each ah, one of them. Boom. Yeah. What did you say? What did you say? Just one of them? Said that I'm not with them. Is it that one? I'm not no. with them, but it looks like. What, no, what did you just say just a moment ago? Oh, what? I make time to pray for, for each one of them. Oh, each one of them. Because you taught us something inside. So myself was in the Grow Your Faith community for a lunch and learn one month. You taught us something really, really powerful. Um, and that is, you don't have to pray. You can pick a day of the week to pray for each child and spend that day communicating with God and praying for that particular child. And then the next day, another child, the next day, they not another child. And I think that was really a big, um, a big point inside the grow your faith community of, 
oh, like an aha moment, you know, because we think we've got to cram everybody's prayers into one, you know, one, all, you know, everybody into this one day and we don't have to do that. And so I thought that was really good, but yeah, a hundred percent, we need to be praying for our children for sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because they are all different. Yeah. You see, and they have different temperaments. Yeah. So you can't treat them the same. You need the wisdom of God to know how to nurture each one of them. If not, you start comparing. Yes. Oh, you see, your brother is this, your sister does that. Why are you? But they are different, you see. So you need God to help you. Even the difficult child, God, how do I go about this child? So especially if you know the day they were born, if they were born on Monday or Tuesday, okay, this, was, this one was born on Tuesday. I will spend Tuesday praying for this. That is her day of birth. So that makes it even more powerful. And then if you all, all those kids, you can be a single mom, but being a single mom doesn't take the eye of God from you and your children. God is your husband and you can go back to him and spend that time in nurturing these children. And then they will be great children and you, it will be a surprise. How best can it be when God is your husband and helping you to take care of your children? It's so powerful. Yes. <laughs> Even um, if you have the husband, you need him to oh, guide uh -huh. both you, your husband and yourself. So if you don't have a husband now, you see him as your husband, as the father of your children. And it works so much perfect for each of your children. <laughs> wow. Amen. Amen. You know what, myself, I do have, and we're going to wrap up here in just a moment, but I do have one more question because I know my community and I know that um, um, prayer can be very, very overwhelming. Um, just a lot of insecurity surrounding prayer. So I have, so to the woman who says, okay, I know that I need to pray for my children more. What do I pray? Can you give us just a little a little synopsis of what we can pray, because I know that's like, is that my listeners? That's exactly what they want. Tell, tell them what, what can we pray to get this conversation started with God about our kids? Okay. So I want, thank you, Tammy. I want you to know that prayer is a conversation mm -hmm. <laughs> between oh, yeah. you and God. It should, you, you should not make it so complicated. Just like you would talk to your earthly father when you were young. That is how God wants us to come to him, come before him. So first and foremost, you should know that prayer is a two-way conversation between you and your heavenly father. And he mm -hmm. loves to listen to you. He loves you to come. He says, come, let us reason together. So when you are going in first, you see it. I'm going to my father to talk to him. And he wants me to talk to him and he wants to talk to me back. That makes it so simple. That is one point, one aspect of it. And then, especially concerning a situation at home, and you are so much overwhelmed with the situation, you don't even know where to start with the prayer and how to end. When you are going to the Lord, you see, I'll come back to Ephesians 4, 6 again. It mm -hmm. says, be anxious for nothing. So when you are going, even though the situation looks so much overwhelming, mm -hmm. you shouldn't be anxious. You have this confidence in your heavenly father. He says that come boldly to him, to his throne room of grace with that confidence. So you are going there knowing that I will receive my answer. Yes. Have that thought. Yes. Whatever, even if it's not the right time for him to answer me, he will do give me the right thing that I need. Mm -hmm. So remember I said it's a conversation. So Father, I want to thank you. This situation, I just don't understand. I don't know how to handle it. Mm -hmm. But I thank you that I know that you are on my side. I'm your child. That is what First John 3 the, from the verse 1 says, ye are the children of God. You see, so you are a child of God. So he will hear you. We become so much confused or so much 
apprehend it's like i you don't know how 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 is it going to happen why is it that? because of the way we are thinking even before we approach god but yeah. if your mind is on him like he's a good father and he wants the best for me he changes everything let me end it with this one when you read matthew 6 when jesus um from the verse 8 of 8 is before you even come that is the verse 8 he knows everything about us and he knows whatever you are going to talk about. Remember that. Mm -hmm. That is Matthew 6, verse 8. And then the verse 9, Jesus starts, our father who art in heaven. You see, he was teaching the disciples. This brings in the thanksgiving and the gratitude again. He was teaching his disciples how to pray. He says, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So he's starting the prayers with thanksgiving, with gratitude, knowing that he's a good father and he has good things for my life. Your will be done, your kingdom come on earth in my life, in my situation. Then he continues. Then it's like a sandwich. He's sandwiched in whatever problem that he wants to give us this day, our daily bread. So he has sandwiched in whatever he or she is thinking, the problem or whatever situation it is, he has sandwiched in and then he goes in and, and in the end again, he also thanked the Lord, you see? So it's your attitude or the emotive, the motive behind going before God really counts when it comes to prayer really really counts so it should be like a conversation thank, knowing that you are not thanking him for that but you are thanking him because he is god and he's a good father yeah yeah so i hope this helps but try that yeah. one and see yeah. yeah yeah try that one and see you see that it makes things so easy even the most difficult times it calms you down and gives you the confidence to always pray yes Yes, exactly. Exactly. That's, that's perfect. And um, exactly what, you know, just understanding that it's a conversation. And, you know, I, I talk a lot about in actually a, a, a freebie that I have called Fearless Prayer. And we talk about those unrealistic expectations surrounding prayer that we, we overcomplicate it so much. And it really is not a complicated um, a conversation. It is literally just a conversation with God and, and it's praising him and it's thanking him and it's, it's going to him with our needs and it's, and it's um, aligning our thoughts with his and helping us see the gratitude, helping us see the blessings within it. So yeah, for sure. Well, myself, thank you so much. This was so good. You know that I loved having you on the show and yes. I love connecting you. And I do hope that we are going to meet this year finally, once and for all. It's been Amen. so many. But uh listen, tell us again if you if you will where we can find you. And of course, I'll put everything in the show notes. Whoops, I'll put everything in the show notes, but go ahead and um, tell tell us where we can find you. Yes. So thank you so much for having me on your show again. I love being here <laughs> and being with you, especially. Yeah. So even before I come to share um, about where you can find the book, you also mm -hmm. have to remember to, I want to, I'm talking to your listeners that God created you and he knows the best for your life. So as Jeremiah 11, 29, um, 29 11 I've, I've changed it 29 11 and he knows the thoughts that he thinks towards you they are of good and not of evil to bring you to an unexpected end and some version to bring you to give you hope and a future so God loves you and he wants the best for you and your children those children were his before he gave them to you so remember that i will leave you with that yes, one yes that huge they were his before he gave them to us they are his above all else and boy that's hard as a mama sometimes to remember that yes they are his <laughs> above all else. so yeah. that was yeah so um you will find my book on mm -hmm. amazon on my website myselimisa.com as i said and then mm -hmm. I want you to also, you can buy it for, if you are a school teacher, a Sunday school teacher, a church, you can buy it and then you share it with your 
yes, your students, not wow. only your children. Yeah, so I'm encouraging each one of us, especially we, the Christians, and thinking of, hey, today, children, things going on. Let's stop talking and let's take action. And wow. these are some books that can help you to develop the children to become what you want them to become. So thank you so much, Tammy, for wow. having wow. me. This you can have other informations and add all my other books on my website and then on Amazon too. Okay. On Amazon, I think I have a library that you have all the books at one place. Yeah. Okay, perfect. I'll put all of that in the show notes for sure. But I'm telling you what, this book is going to change lives, my cell. And I just want to thank you for obeying, walking on obedience and just being willing to walk and say, okay, to the Lord, say, heck yeah, Lord, I'm in, I'm in, so, because this book is really going to make a difference in the world and it's going to change lives. So yeah, I'm excited, my friend. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much, Tammy, for having me. And anyone who buys after reading, please leave, leave a review so that somebody to encourage somebody also to buy. And thank you so much for having me again. I'm so excited for being here again. <laughs> My friend. I told you, right? This episode was so good. My cell always, always brings it for sure. She always brings such good stuff. She, she has such a heart for God and such a heart for moms and grandmothers and really helping to nurture and and um, help their children really grow up with a heart of God themselves. And so I just love everything about this book. Everything that we talked about in the show today, I have put in the show notes. So you're going to want to get your hand. I, in my opinion, I think every single child in your life needs to get a hold of my sales book. This is so incredibly important. And as a matter of fact, when we were in the show, I was thinking of all the people that I want to make sure I send this book to as well. But again, my friends, listen, this is a hard world we're living in. It's really hard when the kids are going to school and they're they're being taught these other things that really don't go along with what God intended for us. And so we as parents have to step up and I don't say that with, you know, condemnation or guilt or shame, but it's just we need all these tools, right, to help raise our children and our grandchildren in a way that just really honors God and really helps them foster a true heart of gratitude. I mean, talk about teaching them good life skills by working through this book together and really helping them see that, okay, when you have a bad day or when something didn't go your way or the way you wanted it to, what can we do? How can we walk this out? And it's just going to be so powerful at really, really teaching our children how to, gosh, just how to manage their emotions, how to walk through things that are hard and, and all of the things. So friends, Again, the link is in the show notes. Go over there, grab her book. She also has another book that I put in the show notes as well. And uh, yeah, friend, I hope you enjoyed this just as much as I did. I always love when my cell comes on. So I will meet you back here next week with another episode of a Faithful God, uh, Faithful God podcast, excuse me.